The trick to working with the slide on surface is to control the surface friction and what causes the particles to collect and fall. If we double click on the slide on surface compound, you'll note that we have attributes to work with. So the first attribute that we want to control are the uh, methods used to calculate the collision. And first off is the offset method. So we can use a particle size itself uh, or an offset distance specified by the value below. Uh, if I look at the animation the way I've got it right now, it looks as though the particle size is working out just fine. There may be a small amount of collision between the particles uh, and the uh, collision object, um, but I'm okay with that for now. If we want to slow the particles down as they hit the surface, you can increase the surface friction. And you'll notice that the particles roll. We take into account the particle size and allow it to roll based on the circumference of the sphere. So you want to control the amount of surface friction so that you slow the particles that, uh, down just enough. You could even randomize the surface friction so they don't all follow one another. If I was to look up a randomized node, or even a, a turbulized node in this case, so we'll say turbulized value by range, We'll use the surface friction, and keep in mind that we want the surface friction between, uh, well, let's say, 0.1 and 0.15. So it's the surface friction. We'll say between 0.1 and 0.15. We'll allow for that to be animated, and we can increase the turbulence scale. So we get a little bit of uh, slow, and, slow and speed up through the animation. If we go a little bit too extreme, you can see that we're going to get uh, a little bit more contrast in, in the movement of the particles, of course. So you can really just play around with these values, just to find the values that work for you. And you can see they're kind of gathering into little runs as they, uh, as they hit now. You can also increase the complexity of the turbulence to make for more interesting patterns as, uh, as they gather on the leaf. And you'll also notice, because of the curved pattern of the surface, if I scale the, uh, the grid, we get a more interesting uh, distribution of particles uh, on the leaf. The next thing we need to set is the set of rules that causes the particles to drip off. So they're dripping off right now just fine, but we might want more particles to gather before that happens. So the trick to this is to use the neighboring particles, which specify a drip parameter. So particles will drip off anything that has an angle threshold of 90 or greater. Otherwise, they tend to just sort of flow along the surface. They won't drip off of it. If it's a steep surface, uh, it'll continue to follow it. And the amount of force that it takes to cause them to drip, the lower the value, the less force it takes, and the higher the value, the more force it takes. So if I was to increase the uh, force threshold, again, we've got to wait for the particles here to, uh, <laughs> to reach the, the goal. You can see how they slow down quite a bit, and then they, and then they roll off. So if I was to increase the number of particles that need to actually be in one space using a cutoff distance, so each particle will measure whether or not there are this many particles, the minimum number, within this distance, uh, that will specify my drip parameter. So I'm actually going to reduce the amount of particles here that are emitting, let's say, to 5 per second. And uh, I'm going to set the rule on the slide on surface to consider, let's say, 5 particles. And the particles, we're going to have to take into account their size to specify our cutoff distance. So the particle size is 0.12. And if I need five particles minimum to be able to consider a drip, then that means that the cutoff distance is 5 times 0.12. So my cutoff distance really needs to be about, uh, say, 0.6 or so. You can see how the particles are kind of hanging there. And in my case, I'm actually running into a little bit of a problem. And it's not so much the drip that's causing the issue. It's the fact that my particles very easily reach a condition 
if I can kind of just stop it right here, where the amount of overlap on the particles is allowing for each of their centers to easily be within 0.6 of one another. So if I continue on, you can see how these four particles will not fall, and they actually assume the same shape. So they haven't actually grown in, uh, in size at all, and then as soon as one gets within 0.6 of a unit, this one right here, it causes a condition where the particles fall. So let's solve for that issue uh, before tuning the drip parameters a little more.